listening to Breakfast with Ross Stevenson. 21 minutes before 8 on a Friday morning on 3AW. This is an enormous pleasure for me to introduce our next uh, guest, uh, Bernzo, because I've only seen uh, the film with Nail and I approximately 50 times, uh, and that is Paul McGann. Welcome to uh, 3AW. Welcome to Melbourne. You've only been here 24 hours. I have. It's, it's, uh, it's all a bit surreal. Good so morning. You are going to, tonight, hold a, a Q&A about this film with Nail and I at the Astor Theatre. Yeah, we're going to screen it. And then tomorrow you're going to be at the science convention because you were Doctor Who. That's right, it's a full, that's my full canon. <laughs> well, From A to B. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a nice conjunction. It's never happened before and I'm, 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 I'm glad, I'm glad it's, uh, it's turned out like that. You must meet people like me a lot in your life who talk about the film with Nail and I that you're going to uh, be presenting and answering yes. a Q&A. But you must, I've got this sort of fantasy in my mind that you will have met someone like the Pope and the Pope will go, I love that scene, or I love it. I mean, is there anyone, you know, supremely famous who has uh, who has wanted to talk to you about the film with Nail and I? I was at this dinner once, and um, someone tapped me on the shoulder, said, "Is that the perfume pass?" Hmm. Turned around, it's the Prime Minister of Ireland. No, <laughs> there's Bertie Ahern. Is that big Bert fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got me, uh, got me to sign for his kids and. Yeah, that's how it goes. Well, because you led me into another question I, I wanted to ask you is Perfume Ponce is uh, early in the f early in the film where uh, you and Withnail go to the pub and an Irishman uh, calls you a Perfume Ponce. Yeah. Uh, what is the, the line that people use most to you from the film when they meet you to talk about this this sort of iconic English film? You know what people have. Last time I spoke to Richard Grant about this, he said he said he thinks that he learned, relearned all of his dialogue from the picture. You know, normally when actors do a picture, you, it's like, you know, it's learning words is that disposable memory, the one that got you through exams. You, yeah. you cram them, you, you lose them, it. you forget them. Yeah. So down the years, you know, the, 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 the amount of times that people have stood in front of us, performing a scene from the, from the thing, yeah. knowing the words, he said it made him learn his words again. He, 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 uh, he relearns his part. Somebody yeah. chalked perfume punts with an arrow to my front door on, on the pavement outside my house. Sometimes the lines that... Does it worry you that someone knew where you live? Slightly. Yeah. So you still... someone with a sense of humour, so... Yeah, and you, but you, it's good to hear that you're still mates with uh, Richard Grant? <coughs> yeah, I mean, I don't... Um, we don't see each other that much, but when we do, we giggle. The yeah. last time I saw him, in fact, was to see a screening of the picture um, a couple of years ago. It was a hoot. Now, you're a graduate of the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts and you've made about 18 movies, correct? Mm. Which one are you most proud of? I think this one. With Nail and I. I think so because, and I think if you were to ask most people, particularly most performers, you know, what was the best one, what was the, when were you happiest? It was the first one. Yeah. Because you were a kid, you were green, you were, and it was, you know, that was the ambition. My ambition as a kid was to be in a movie. For those listening who, who, who haven't seen the, the film, the first thing is you should see it. Uh, it was made in 1987? 86, I mean, yeah. 86. Uh, it's a film about two out-of-work actors in, uh, in Camden Town in, in London, and, there's, and their, I guess one of them is specifically their frustrations about not getting work. What is it about the film? I, I've got this uncertain memory, you tell me whether it's true, that is very very big in American acting circles, that, that a lot of famous American actors love the film with Nail and I. Yeah, Johnny Depp, for example, is a huge fan. In fact, Depp <coughs> and um, Bruce Robinson, who made, wrote, wrote and directed with Nail and I, just worked together on a picture. But for years, Johnny Depp's been, listen to me, <laughs> yeah, me and Johnny, yeah. but, but Johnny, I've never actually met him, but, um, but uh, I know he's been badgering Bruce Robinson to do a remake. Right. You know, so he can play the part. Which, which part? Presumably mine. Right. Um, but, but, but there wouldn't be any point in remaking it, would there? There's no point whatsoever. In no. Remaking it. Um, but you're right, you know, and it's, I mean, for the likes of me, it kind of, not to say it opens doors, but it certainly gets you into, it gets you into some parties. Did you know it was going to be a success when you were making it? No. Did you think it was funny when you were making it? Yeah, we did. Because it's extremely yeah, we funny. Did. Film. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the crew 
Mind you, we thought, because we'd never been in a picture, me and him, we thought, this is how pictures are made, and the crew must always fall around laughing if it's a comedy, kind of. Yeah. Um, whereas Robinson, the director, was deeply superstitious. Didn't like it, didn't like it if people laughed on the set. And, um, but yeah, we thought it was funny. When I do see it, Paul, and I apologise for the fact that I haven't at this stage seen it, he's seen it 50 times, um, what, will, will I be aware of its age? Or is it an ageless film? One of my kids said to me, it's a bit like a Smith's album. It's like a Smith's record. He said it's from an era, he said it, I don't know, it, might, it, it doesn't define, the, it, it's slightly out of time. It, it, You're not quite sure when it was made. I mean, you know, would you say it was a mid-80s picture? You know, it was made amidst kind of, you know, <laughs> Merchant Ivory and... Top Gun and those things, Wall Street, it's from that period. It's a good question because when you think about it, it is ageless. It, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't look like, mm. say, a Michael Caine movie from the 1960s. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't have that. Doesn't I think that's that because it was, yeah, but it's, it's about a very specific period of the 60s. It's the last six weeks of the 60s. So the whole, you know, the whole premise of the film is that this thing is running down. You know, the events actually happened. They did live in this house these things did take place. But it's about the end of it. You know, the, the mates that, that, I, that I have that are old enough to remember that period, they said it was a real weird time. Yeah. You know, as the 60s became the 70s, and of course, you know, famously, you know, certain iconic figures died, left us, um, and the war was still on. And, that, and, it, and it's very, it's from this point, so it's about things running down um, yeah. as much as... Being celebrated. It's not the it's swinging. The it's not the, the swinging sixties. You feel like a door closed at the end of the movie, didn't you? Yeah. Was Whitnail in love with I? That's a very astute question. Hmm. I think he probably is. We were told, and it's been said since, that it's like a marriage. It's, it's an odd couple thing. Hmm. There's no women in the film. There's no. no there's no girls in the film. There's no car chases, there's no set pieces, there's no violence, there's no killers. The only no, woman I can no, think you know, of. So it's, 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 uh, I remember listening to, to one of the producers actually trying to sell the thing on the telephone. And I, 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 could, I was picturing this guy at the other end, you know, as his face was dropping here. Yeah. Was, what, what, just two, what? Yeah. Two boys, what, what, talking? The only woman I can think of is the woman who was asked to deliver the finest wines in humanity. Yeah, Mrs. Blair has it. <laughs> was it. In your script, was your character called I? He was, he has a name. He has a name? He has a name, Peter Marwood. Ah. You never hear it. No, you never hear it. So your script was Marwood? Yeah, yeah. Right. And the whole thing came from a... from a, a manuscript. Came from... in the 60s, these boys, Bruce Robinson, a uh, couple of the guys who were actually in the picture, one of them, the guy who played the poacher, Michael Elphick, he lived in the house. These drama students, they, they, they lived in this place in the, in the early mid-60s. Um, all these trainee actors. But Robinson fancied himself as a writer even then. Although he went on to make 15, 20 pictures. Yeah. International pictures as well. He was a, you know, he was a successful actor. He, it was, it was, he wanted to be a writer. And he began, even then, when they were living in the house, he began to write this stuff down. Kept a, kept a diary of, these, <coughs> yeah. of this craziness of these events. You're going to uh, host that tonight at the Astor Theatre and you're going to hold an audience uh, Q&A. Um, so, people, please, as bigger fans of the movie as uh, as I am, and there are lots of them, and a full of, a fan of Paul yeah, particularly those that have seen it, maybe just on DVD, or I've never yeah. seen a print of it. See it how it's meant to be seen. Come along and see it. Yeah, I know. It's I've, glorious. It is glorious. And when you do your Q and A, what's the question that you would anticipate the most? What What do you know you will be asked? Um. Probably, some, probably something about him, that is Grant, and his drinking, yeah. or non-drinking. Yeah. This is the best drunk act I've ever seen yeah. on film. <laughs> Far not. And yet, yeah. he's teetotal. Is he a teetotal? He's teetotal. Oh. Allergic to drink. Yeah, that's got him interested now. He wants to go yeah. and see the best <laughs> drunk act. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic drunk act. Well, it's an absolute uh, it's a, a pleasure to have met you, and we'd urge people to get along to the Astor tonight. But also, um, you've got the Star Trek and Doctor Who uh, convention uh, that people can find at firstcontactconventions.com.au. With nail is one word. 
W-I-T-H-N-A-I-L, with Thale and I, and if you haven't seen it, you ought. Paul, it's been lovely. To, uh, thank you for about 24 hours uh, in the country coming in to see us. My pleasure.